stopped driving a few years ago once Ola Uber started in Bangalore. And it has worked well so far. I get to catch up with work, get on calls, catch up on the smartphone, use my laptop as the cab inches to the very notorious Bangalore traffic. But every now and then, I also land up striking a deep conversation with the cab driver in the local language. In Bangalore, the cab drivers who are from the state are extremely elated when they find passengers like me who can talk the local language natively and the bonhomi results in an engaging conversation. Typically, the conversation starts with me asking the driver, so Rudrapa, where are you from? And Rudrapa would come back with an approximate region like Tumkur. Rudrapa would assume that I will not have a clue of the taluk name and the village name and hence no point in getting specific, right? But then he gets very intrigued with my familiarity of the taluk names, the village names and the fact that my work has taken me to these villages and his, his very neighborhood. And then he starts his share of questions. Sir, what do you do? And glancing at my laptop that I just put into the bag, he would further ask, and how come you are intimately aware of my neighborhood villages like Chiknak Nahali? I basically try to get the cows in the villages connected to the internet, I respond. After a well rehearsed pause, having had multiple such conversations before, I continue and enable the monitoring of the milk flow on a smartphone as it traverses from a small farm in his village to a city like Bangalore. Basically, I'm a highway builder, but a highway of a different kind, a digital highway builder for the dairy supply chain. Rudrapa would then turn back, stare in disbelief for a few seconds and continue. And I say to myself that he's probably had weirder conversations with other passengers. In Bangalore, you never know. The primary reason for his bewilderment are the visuals he has of a dairy foray in a typical village. And this is the reason for his disbelief. I then ask him, how much land do you have in your village, Rudrapa? And he'd respond proudly that it's a couple of acres. And then I tell him that a lot can be done with two acres for, from a dairy perspective. He can in fact earn over 5,000 rupees per day with two acres of land. All he needs are a few internet enabled cows on the farm and onboard himself onto our digital highway that we have built and continue to build. And then I continuously walk him through the digital highway, buttressed with empirical data and as to what we have accomplished via our digitization attempts thus far. Using a metaphorical allusion, I ask him, Rudrapa, do you want to drive down the digital highway as we plow through the Bangalore traffic? And with a smile, I add, ensure to wear your seatbelt this time. As I drive along with him through the digital highway that we have constructed for the dairy supply chain, I try to acquaint him with the possibilities such as I show him cows whose e-stress management, health management, nutrition management, vaccination, deworming, etc. are all managed via a cloud-based software platform with the pedometer as a live real-time activity data source. In our visuals, that I try to acquaint him as we drive down our digital highway with daring aspects that he thought were not possible where every cow has a virtual personalized family doctor attending to it to improve the milk productivity, to switch to a preventive healthcare regime instead of the traditional sickness management, to optimize breeding, to optimize nutrition, to optimize general upkeep of the cattle, etc. Still unable to digest the possibilities and the visuals that we see on our digital highway, Rudrapa would come back and say, all of this needs a lot of money. Who will lend to a smallholder farmer? Banks and every other organized big town service provider run away from a smallholder farmer. They think all farmers are alike and do not have the ability to repay given the risks involved in the agriculture and farming. For a smallholder farmer to afford these technologies and improve the farm, he needs money. And hence, I do not believe what you're saying, Rudrapa would emphasize. I bring him back to the realm of possibilities because this is something that we have done via our digitization initiatives in over 30,000 villages in India. I remind him that the internet connected cow and the farm is generating a lot of data that enables meritocratic farmers to gain access to organized ecosystem of banks, insurance companies, 
multinational cattle nutrition companies, cattle pharmaceutical companies via the digital highway that we have built for the dairy supply chain. I reinforce the fact that today in the villages we are deploying technologies such as facial recognition of animals. In this traditional world that he is so acquainted with, the normal IDing mechanism is replete with flaws. Farmers misuse them as they collude with the insurance company agents who are in charge of traditional tagging of the animals. In this traditional world, the animal tag is in the farmer's pocket and any animal in the vicinity dies, he then retrospectively tags the dead animal and then claims insurance. The issue here is not with the farmer, Rudrapa was quick to add. It's not that the farmers are bad, it's just that the high untenable cost of insurance lures the farmers to be innovative in the wrong direction and this sets off a negative spiral wherein the insurance companies increase their insurance premiums even higher and the insurance for an important asset like a livestock becomes completely unviable for the farmer. I draw his attention back to the digital highway where insurance companies are now flocking up to the farmers to offer insurance at a very affordable premium and in fact in a way that they can now digitally deduct small amounts of money from the milk revenue in a daily affordable sachet quantum. And going back to his original question of the lack of access to capital for the dairy farmers, I draw his attention to the digital highway where the banks are flocking up to the farmers because now, based on the data and the alternate credit score, the banks are more than willing and in fact keen to disburse cattle loans and technology financing loans to increase the farm size. Rudrapa is now more intri intrigued than ever before. How does the alternate credit score work? Because many good farmers have bad MFI loan repayment history. None of the smallholder farmers in my village get any formal credit of a meaningful size from the banks. I try to explain to him how data-led risk underwriting works as to how the data about his animals, about his farming practices, animal husbandry protocol adherences such as cow vaccination, deworming, schedule compliance, etc. And his cash flow details, I emphasize this to Rudrappa as farmer's salary account, cash flow's salary account, enables a good, robust alternate credit score, which can be used by the banks without any correlation with his past MFI repayment schedule and also enable good quality credit of meaningful ticket size, including to farmers who are new to credit and do not have any past borrowing history. The mention of farmers cash flows, salary account intrigues him further. This prompts me to walk further down the digital highway that we built for the dairy supply chain, down to the milk collection centers. In his visuals, the traditional milk collection centers looks something like this. I tag him back to my visuals based on what we have accomplished in over 30,000 villages in India. In a digitized world, the collection centers would look something like this. I also tell him that at the digitized collection centers equipped with internet connected devices, tablets, all of his activities at the farm is known to the operator a priori. That, for example, if he does not follow the antibiotic quarantine adherence protocols, for example, if an animal is injected with antibiotics for whatever reason, this milk will automatically be collected in a separate can, in, in many cases rejected even. It's quite, he's quite surprised to find that his activities at the farm in real time will be used to change the milk procurement workflow at the collection center. Further, I tell him that the sensors at the milk collection center can detect milk adulteration, water, adi water addition, contaminations, etc. So that he is now forced to follow clean milk production protocols at the farm and cannot hoodwink the dairy processors who can provide premium market linkages. In fact, I tell him that the sensor-based milk collection will also result in auto advisories to improve his animal husbandry practices at the farm. For example, better nutrition for his lactating animals to ensure improved 
fat content in the milk because its payments are linked to the fat and protein content of the milk. And now for the most important part that he has been waiting to hear. I tell him that at the digitized milk collection center, his milk will be converted to currency in real time as a function of the quality of milk that he has poured. That is, before he even turns away from the milk collection center after pouring his share of milk produced at his farm by the internet enabled cows, he will get the milk money transferred to his account in real time. He will get a tingle on his phone with all the details, that is, a real time milk passbook updated on his phone in real time. And this milk passbook is also used in determining his alternate credit score. Now that we are talking money, he wants to understand the possible income increase. I then use live examples of farmers who we have worked with to show how income levels have increased from something like 40 rupees a day to 5000 rupees a day. This leaves him wide-eyed. The notion of premium market linkages intrigues him. He asks, isn't all milk the same? So what is so premium about milk? I then explain to him about the digitized cold chain that ensures that not only milk quality is preserved, but also energy consumed in chilling milk is optimized. He is amazed when I tell him that more than 500 million liters of diesel is used to chill milk every single year. And it's a big loss to the nation if this is not optimized. The fact that Rudrappa is a high school pass and of inquisitive nature finds this to be a mind-boggling fact and tugs the patriot in him when I refer to the loss of resources to the nation from non-optimal milk chilling. While we are on the energy optimization topic, let me take a small digression here from the cab ride narrative to make a related point. There is a general notion in the industry that technology intervention and digitization in general do not pay heed to sustainable development goals. This is not true of application of digitization in agriculture, which naturally fits well into the sustainable development goals. Let me illustrate this with an example. Based on the work that we have done in yield improvement for dairy cattle by applying digitization, a cow on an average releases between 70 to 120 kg of methane per year from flatulence, regurgitation and exhalation. The negative effect on the climate of methane is 23 times higher than the negative impact of carbon dioxide. Therefore, the release of about 100 kg of methane per year for which for each cow is equal to about 2300 kg of carbon dioxide per year. According to FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, Agriculture is responsible for 18% of the total release of greenhouse gases worldwide and cattle breeding is a major contributor to this. Hence, if you work out the math, you will see that an increase in productivity of milk from 5 litres to 12 litres per day can result in a carbon footprint reduction of 60%. This is massive. Coming back to my cab ride with Rudappa, he is now by now trying to replace his traditional visuals with new age digitization visuals of the dairy supply chain that he has heard from me till now. He continues, you still haven't answered my question. What is the notion of a premium milk? For people in the city, milk is milk is milk. I respond to him by saying that two out of three Indians drink milk that is adulterated and contaminated. When you look it up in the microscope or test it in the lab, there is in fact a pent up demand in the market for fresh, pure, antibiotic-free, pesticide-free milk. Milk that is traceable to its source, that is, his farm and his animals next to Chik Naik Nahali. Just imagine if you can scan a QR code on the pouch of milk and get a full traceability tree right down to a smiling, happy cow up here on the phone. Further, Indians drink milk, do not eat milk, via value-added products like cheese, ghee, paneer, whey proteins, etc. We are perhaps where Europe was maybe 50 years ago. As we shift from a drink milk society to a eat milk paradigm, digitization is critical to enable this transformation as packaged milk products will warrant more visibility into the dairy supply chain, better quality and better assurances. As I get off the cab 
and leave a highly motivated Rudrappa behind. I can see his eyes light up and I can hear him ruminate under his breath about the possibility of leaving behind his taxi driving job, getting back to his village and try his hand at getting on board our digitized dairy highway with a bunch of internet connected cattle at his farm. And little does he know about all the under the hood jargons that we techies play with every single day, such as Internet of Things or IoT, Cloud, Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning, Computer Vision, FinTech, InsureTech. It would be difficult for Rudrappa to ascribe the support that is being provided to over 2.5 million farmers in India, trying to shift them from a small holder farmer orbit to an entrepreneurial orbit as we build out this digital highway using technologies that we techies deal with and hold close to our heart every single day. And perhaps I might meet him on another journey, but this time in his village next to Chiknaiknali instead of in a Ola or Uber taxi.